Okay, so till this point, we were able to create our project and now we need to execute certain things, right? Basically, if a user is asking for all the questions, we need to return all the questions, not just saying that, hey, this is your questions. We need to actually print those questions. So if you go back to your browser and if you execute this, which is questions, okay, not questions, it, is, it should be question because we are, that's the request mapping. Enter, it should print this, it should print, these are your questions, right? Okay, but then we want to print the actual questions which is coming from database. In, and I have shown you, right, in database we have all those questions here, uh, as you can see. Okay, so how do we achieve this? So what we can do is, let's go back here and actually fetch questions from database. Now for this we need multiple layers. So basically whenever you build a web application, we use different layers there. So this is your controller, right, so the, this is your main controller. This is responsible to accept the request from the user. And then the request goes to the service layer. Now the, we have one more layer in between, which is your service layer. The work of a service layer is to do some processing. Let's say if you want to add two numbers. Now, as a client says, okay, I want to add two, two plus three. Now this data goes to the controller because controller is responsible to communicate with the user. But then controller will not add these two values. Controller will simply say, okay, uh, I got these values. Now I need someone to add these values. So the request goes to the service layer. Now in service layer, you mention all your business logic. What you need to do when you get these values, what operation you want to perform. So that's the job of service layer. Now service layer can do any business logic. It can do any processing, any type of calculation you want. But what if you want to fetch data from database? Now in that case, you have one more layer, which is your DAO layer. Now this DAO layer is responsible to actually connect with database and fetch data, okay? Now let's say on the service layer, you, are, you want to get data from database. Of course, you get data from the DAO layer, but also you can process, you can do some logical processing inside your service layer, okay? So we got three layers here and that's what we want to do here. So basically, let's say uh, we are in the controller now and inside the controller, I'm saying, Hey, you know, uh, we just want to, I mean, instead of returning the text, I want to return the actual data. So what I want to return is, uh, I want to get data from the, from the service layer. Now, basically let's create a object of service layer, which is question service. And this question service will ask, Hey, get me all questions. Most of the time you will have the same method names, but sometimes it can be different. Okay. So it depends upon the use case. At this point, I'm assuming that in my service class, I have the same method. Now the weird thing is we don't even have a service class. So let's create one. Of course, you can just right click here. You can create a service class. We can do that. Let's say new and I'm creating a new class and I will name this class as question service. And then I just also want to make sure that this class service belongs to a service package. It's a good idea to move things in a different package, depend upon the use case or depend upon the type of the service or class you're creating. So this is service, all the service classes goes, goes into service package, all the controllers goes into controller package. So we have to do that. So move the package to service and it says it's not able to find one. No issue, let me just create a service package. Now, once we have created the package, now I can move move to the service package. Okay. So you can see now the service is into service. In fact, for controller as well, it, it is always a good idea to put that in a different package. So package, I will name this as a controller. And now even this goes to the controller. Of course, you can also drag it there, the refactor, it will, it, it will work. So if I expand this, you can see we have a controller and controller package. Okay. So in this, basically in this service, I want to make sure that I have that method. So if I go back to my controller, see, we, we do, we'll not be working with this. So I can just close this and application properties one set. You don't need to do anything with that. Let me close it. I just want to keep it simple. We got two window open here, controller and service. So if I go back to controller, uh, of course I need the object of service. So I will, what I will do is I will say question service and this should be question service. So you can see I'm creating a reference. And also, since we are using a spring framework, I don't need to say new question service. What we can do is we can use auto wired here and then, uh, okay, that's auto wiring. The only thing I have to do is on top of this class, since you want spring to handle these objects, you can use annotations. Now, if you want spring to create the object, of course you can use add component, but spring also provides you some different annotations, which, which does the same work of component but different names, which is one of the, one of it is service. 
Now, of course, you can also add component, but since it's a service layer, let's write service. So go back here and you can see auto wiring done. There's no problem with this. There's a warning for auto wire. Field injection is not recommended. Yeah, you can, you, go, you can go for constructor or setters, but okay, let's ignore that. Now, once we got this, we can get all questions. But unfortunately, if you look at this service class, we don't have any method. So of course I can type it here or I'm lazy. I'll just go here and uh, say, hey, you know, uh, get all the questions. But there's one thing before I do that. See, when you say you get all the questions, will you get one question or multiple questions? Or we don't even have a model here. So the thing is, how will you represent a question? So if you go back to your database, you can see you have multiple columns here, right? You can see we got ID, we got category, we got difficulty level, option one, option two, option three. And if I scroll a bit, you can see we have option four, question title, right answer. Oh, so many uh, parameters, right, or the columns. So to represent each table, we create a class, okay? We call them as entities. And we also call them as model in MVC model, MVC patterns, right? So what I will do is just to represent that, even before we get, do get all the questions, it is a good idea to create a class which will be your question class. Now this is your model class, okay? And uh, this will have those variables. So you can think about a class design matching with the table design. So class name, table name, the class uh, fields are your table columns, right? And also the number of objects you have for a class, each object can represent a row, right? That's your ORM, object relational mapping. Okay, so here, what I will do is I will create those variables quickly. So what are the variables? So what are the variables we have? So first of all, we have an ID. So I will simply say pri uh, private integer ID. That's the first column. Uh, the second one we have is question. So I can say question title. Of course, we need to match the variable name here and with the column name there. Otherwise, you have to specify what column name you are using in the table. Okay, so if you look back to your table, and if you scroll a bit, uh, you can see we have question title here. So automatically it will put underscore because in SQL it follows uh, a snake casing rule. So basically we have to put underscore between two, let two words. But in Java we use camel casing, we use a capital letter. So the ORM framework, in this case we are using JPA, will take care of it. Then we got option one. And likewise, we got option two, three, four. What I can do is, as I'm lazy, I will just say paste, paste one more time because for the answer as well. So this is option two, this is option three, this is option four, and this is my right answer. The next thing we need is difficulty level. As we mentioned before, we have three levels here, easy, medium, difficult. So for that also I can use a string. Of course, you can also do that with the help of numbers, but uh, since in the database we already have created uh, a column, which is difficulty level, which is of type string. So we'll go with that. So difficult, T level. You know, the thing is, I should be using a capital one, but the thing is, here, if you see database, the difficulty level is still the same. There's no underscore here. So we cannot put a capital L. So again, when you design the application, you design in a proper way. I just did that, you know, I created this table with, uh, with a name and then now I'm trying to match it. Okay, so ignore that part. So the good way is to have that capital L so that you will get underscore in the table. Okay, and here we need to make, make sure that this ID is a primary key, right? The, the way you do that is by mentioning the ID as the annotation. And also uh, this ID will be auto-generated. So what you can do is you can say generated value and you can specify this strategy, which is generated type sequence. Okay, uh, if this doesn't work, I will go for the identity. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so now uh, for the question, also we have to use and annotation. So basically what happens is, we want this table to get mapped with the class, right? So if you want to do that mapping, we have to use something called an entity, which is annotation. If you have a different table name, so example, here the table name is question itself, so there's no problem, but if you have something else, then you have to use at table as well. And since I'm using Lombok here, I don't want to, normally if you don't use Lombok, for every variable here, we need to create two methods, getter and setters, two string method also. Uh, so imagine how lengthy the code becomes. And that's what's a good idea to put uh, at data here, which is coming from Lombok. 
and we are done. So we got this question. No problem now. Let's go back here. In fact, you know, uh, this also recommends that you use this. It says typo. So what is suggesting to? Okay, it's not giving any suggestion, but it says there's a typo because we have not used capital. But that's fine. I, I can say I can live with that. Okay, so if I go back to controller now, uh, so what do you think? Will I represent a string or the object? Of course, it should be object this time, right? So we don't want to return a string. We want to return an object. But then how many objects we're going to, we're going to return? One, two, multiple, right? So this should not be a simple question. First of all, let's import the package. So it says there are multiple classes, uh, multiple choice. Import class. Okay, there's a question in, uh, in, in build package as well. I will use mine. And then we have to make sure that we are returning a list of questions, not one. Okay, so we have to import the list as well, done. And now actually we can work with get all questions. So what I will do is I will just ask the IDE to create a method called or get all questions. And you can see the method we got in question service. It's just that we have to provide some logic. Now, of course, the service here is not doing any processing. It's just fetching data from the DAO layer. Oh, we don't have a DAO. So what I will do is I will create a class. I will name this class as uh, question DAO. And then we have to make sure that this belongs to a different package, a DAO package. And you have to create a DAO package here. We'll say new package DAO and just move this to DAO. Done. Okay, now this looks cool. We got DAO as well. And uh, the thing is, for on top of service, we are doing service here, right? On top of DAO, we have to mention it is a repository. Okay, now the fun part is when you say we have a DAO here, and of course, there will be a method as well. Example, if I go back here, and when I say get all questions, there should be a method in, because see, ultimately I have to use DAO, right? Example, I will just come back here and I will say, hey, you know, I want the question DAO object here so that I can call the methods and I want this to be auto wired. So that's done. And then using this DAO, question DAO dot, I can fire the method, right? So of course in the DAO as well, we'll be having the same question, same method, which is uh, get all questions, right? So this should be simple. And then once you get all the questions, we can re return it. But the thing is, in question DAO, we don't have that method. So what you will say, hey, you know, just create the method. Okay, even if I create the method, we have to fetch data from database. Now, if you know JDBC, basically we have to write those beautiful seven steps, right? It looks like seven steps, but the code is very lengthy. You have to fire the SQL query. You will get a lot of data. You have to iterate between that data and convert that into a list of questions. Oh, a lot of work, right? Don't worry, we got you covered. That's what Spring says. Spring says, we, you know, one of the package we have introduced here, if you go back to pom.xml, uh, one of the package we got here is data JPA, right? Now, with the help of data JPA, what you can do is, instead of creating a class, we can create an interface. And then we just need to extend a interface called JPA repository. That's it. All the things like fetching data from database, saving data will be handled by data JPA. I know that sounds like a magic, right? But then, okay, so before we do that, so JPA repository asks you for two things. What type of table you're working with and what is the type of primary key, which is integer here. So you have to mention two things. The table name, actually you have to mention the class name, which maps to the table. And also you have to mention the primary key type. That's it. Now I know you're not trusting me there, right? You'll be like, hey, that's impossible. Let's go back to our service. And of course you can see it is not working. This method is not there. If this method is not there, there might be some other methods. Let's try it out. I will say dot. And can you see that? If I scroll down, there are so many methods here. One of the method is find all. It will give you the list of questions. Example, if I jump here, you can see find all gives you a list. We just have to use it. So it will return the list of questions. Our job is done. Are you still not trusting me? Just wait and watch. Let me just restart the server because we have made some changes. Of course, we should have gone for dev tool for the hot boot. Okay, now let's go back to the browser and refresh. Boom. Can you see that? Okay, this is a raw. The thing is, uh, if, if you are getting this type of output on your screen, and I can get this is because I have installed one of the plugin. It is called a JSON 
formatter okay so because of this json formatter it gives you this beautiful json look and you can see we got all the questions doesn't matter the topic oh did i just forgot this topic name yeah we forgot the category oh how can i do that so if i go back here in my question we don't have category in table we had that so category Okay, now let's restart and go back to our browser, refresh, boom. You can see we got the category as well. So we got Java, Python. We have two categories at this point, which we are using it here. Cool. So this is how you can fetch data, right? And we have done with the fetching part. Uh, what about fetching by category? So at this point, we were able to fetch data and make sure that before you go for the next video, you actually practice this. Okay, cool. So. If you talk about fetching all data, we are doing that. But what if you want to fetch based on a category, something like this? I can go back here. I can say, hey, I don't want all the questions. I want to fetch based on a category. That too, it should be, let's say, Java. And if you say enter, it should only print questions for Java. And if you mention, let's say, not Java, but Python, it should print all the Python uh, questions and also i want to add questions i want to delete questions maybe let's only work with add delete and update you can do it by yourself let's do that category part and adding in the next video